hello everyone uh, my name is dr deeksha joshi and uh, i have secured all india india rank 19 this year in the upsc civil services examination this was my third attempt at upsc and uh, my optional subject was medical science a uh, little background about myself i come from pithoragarh in uttarakhand and i have done most of my schooling uh, till class 10th from pithoragarh itself and two years or uh, later in dehradun i completed my class 12th from there uh, i have done my um, uh, mbbs from uh, himalayan institute of medical sciences uh, jolly grand dehradun and uh, i completed my internship in 2019 from uh, government doon medical college and since then i have been preparing for the civil services examination Yes. So it is your third attempt, right? Yes, sir. So what was it so different this time? To be in top twenty, it's not a joke, right? They want to know that yes, success sir. formula. We'll start with that. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, so I think uh, my preparation in the first attempt, uh, it was not the complete preparation because I started uh, preparing during my internship, and that is when because of the internship, I did not get enough time uh, to prepare, and also shifting from science background to uh, humanity subject was also a challenge. I was doing it all by myself. so to understand all of that uh, it took a lot of time and i could not finish the syllabus that was the reason i did not clear my first attempt in the second attempt i did work very hard uh, i tried to cover up all the mistakes that i made in my first attempt but the basic problem that i had was probably again i did not understand the demand of this examination uh, for example if i can say for ancient and medieval i was following a material from a coaching institute rather than referring to standard books like ncert uh while i was solving my mock papers i was mindlessly solving the papers without realizing that uh, what sort of mistakes am i committing i was not analyzing my papers well enough and the third uh, major blunder that i committed in my second attempt was uh, during the day of the exam uh, i wasn't uh, i took a lot of pressure on myself that i have to somehow get through this exam this year and uh, because of that anxiety that unnecessary pressure that i took Uh, i was so nervous in the exam that uh, i also marked uh, the omr bubble wrong for one question and when i marked that wrong i got more nervous and i marked the another bubble also wrong so uh, that is i think was a very big lesson for me that it is one part is your preparation but at the same time you have to be very calm and composed uh, even during the day of the exam so these were the major uh, mistakes that i tried to correct i think prelims was one of the biggest hurdles for me and this year uh, working on all of this uh, i was able to clear up prelims and then successively uh, mains and interviews yes so i think this is the trend right uh, uh, like if you qualify prelims you have like ample uh, chances to get into the mainstream right yes, sir. and this is the first time you cleared prelims in the last yes sir uh, yes sir yes and how was the experience with csat because for medical students i heard that uh, last yes. year it was uh, a bit tough right so yes sir uh again so for csat uh, i had a similar kind of issue because after class 10th i only opted for pcb so maths i left uh, and also even before that i wasn't one of those who was very good at math so uh, csat was definitely challenging and also in the present times the difficulty level for csat paper has increased so uh, this year what i tried to do was there is a book uh, by rs agarwal uh, for competitive exams so i got that book from the market and i practiced a few quant questions from there i would not say that this is the only source that you can refer to it depends from person to person that was the book that i was able to find so i used that book uh, the other technique that i also followed was analysis of the past year papers so i downloaded the last five year papers of csat and actually solved all the questions of quant uh, i do have a good command in english language but then in upsc uh, i think uh, for majority of students you cannot rely on comprehension so the quant part has to be strong enough Uh, identify some of the common uh, topics from which the questions are being asked for example number system profit and loss averages uh, speed time and distance and uh, every student or aspirant who is preparing should practice a few questions from these areas and uh, practice a few full length mock papers also before going to the exam this is irrespective of your background because a lot of engineering students also i have known that uh, who could not clear their csat paper so however confident you are about your csat paper at least practice one to two papers before you are going to the actual exam to know how you will be able to perform and manage your time yes so that's okay so uh, this is the csat part what about prelims like what you have you uh, have you been uh, part of any of the institute for prelims coaching or you are doing it on your own okay 
so sir i was a part of an institute in uh, my second attempt but uh, it wasn't very helpful so i think uh, in this exam process uh, coaching is not very helpful but uh, what has been more helpful for me is having a right mentor who can help you because uh, there is no one size fit all approach every each one of us have our own strengths and weaknesses so for me uh, i found a mentor in delhi uh, anupam sir so he was actually guiding me and he helped me analyze my mock papers my uh, strengths and weaknesses what are my weak areas so i think that was also a major uh, change that i made in my strategy that uh, i will not blindly follow whatever uh, somebody is being telling me but adjust the preparation according to my needs uh so so uh, anupam uh, sir his full name is anupam jain and uh, he runs a smart work lab is academy uh, in delhi yes so uh, when i first visited him it was after when i had failed my second attempt in october 2020 mm-hmm. so i was extremely uh, demotivated at that point of time because uh, i have been a good student academically so it was uh, very difficult to digest the fact that i have worked so hard for this exam and i could not even clear the first stage uh, which is actually supposed to be only the qualifying stage so it was at that point of time when i met him and uh, uh, i was also in a state where i was saying that you know i want to give up uh, the upsc preparation and shift into post graduate mm-hmm. entrance mm-hmm. once again yeah. uh, so that is when uh, i think apart from my parents and my brother sir was one of the very few people who told me that uh, you know i can see that caliber in you and uh, i think that if we try and correct whatever mistakes you have made in your last attempt uh, i will see your name in the uh, good rank in the next, this year's exam so i think throughout the year uh, not only for prelims uh, for mains also uh, sir has been very very helpful because he actually sat with me uh, during my gs papers also so wherever i was going and writing the test so he used to i used to come back to him sit with my test papers for one to one discussion so he would actually tell me how to improve on introduction body and conclusion and all of that so that was very helpful uh, again for interview also i think i repeatedly sought his guidance uh, so the strategy that we were following for interview was that wherever i would go for a mock interview and then i would come back sit with the video that i would get and uh, then he would tell me how i can refine my answers better uh, where am i going wrong have i interpreted the questions wrong so i think that also because uh, if i were to see my first mock interview video it was actually a disaster <laughs> and i think uh, in the final uh, interview if i have been able to get a score of 193 so uh, that is also credited to him because uh, we really worked extensively in that part also so uh, this was how uh, i worked with him for my preparation yes yes it's crucial right at that point of time after not doing uh, same for doctors for medical fraternity we only see success till we get into medicine yes, so after that uh, it is always a, a roadblock for us yes sir. and uh, to come back from there is really appreciable and finding the right mentor at the right time yes, uh, it's it's very important that's what i tell all the aspirants that it can be done on your own but again when you have a support system it be it be a yes, family or any coaching institute yes, it always comes handy in an exam like upsc Okay. Yes, sir. So the prelim, uh, the main strategy, uh, like how you approach this year, the mains part, and what was your, like how many mock tests did you give? Yes. Okay. Uh, so for mains, uh, so uh, preparation, uh, I had to actually uh, revamp all my preparation after my second attempt because, as I said, there were major blunders in the preparation. So I had done some basic reading, but I realized that that was not sufficient because uh, if I were to tell my score. then in my first attempt my score was somewhere around 83 in the prelims paper but in my second attempt the score was 72 and the cut off was 92 okay. so that was yeah. that was actually a shock for me that despite attending coachings doing classes and now i have landed up in a position that is worse than my first attempt so uh, i had to actually revive everything what i so my major focus was actually on prelims uh for mains uh what i did was before prelims was to consolidate and have the notes for all the subjects mm-hmm. for example topics like society uh topics like uh social justice governance or internal security disaster management uh, even ethics so what i did was to uh find out which sources am i going to refer and have at least one reading of that source so that i know what are the topics that are uh, present in my notes and i am not confused right after my prelims so this was one thing that i did before prelims after prelims 
my major focus again was to revise these sources which are different uh, from the prelims topic because the prelims uh, portion had already done for prelims so i knew that i only have to practice the answer writing part mm -hmm. so i focus mostly on optional and uh, this uh, portion which is non overlapping with uh, the prelims syllabus and uh, with regard to the test series so i followed only one test series because uh, this time anyway there was less gap between the prelims and mains yes yes so i followed the vision is uh, test series i uh, the it was a 12 test set a uh, few sectional and four full length papers so that was all that i did uh, for gs okay. this year so started early or you started after prelims writing test and uh, yes sir so again here uh, i think uh, there was a tragedy that happened with me despite i worked so hard for uh, my csat paper uh, what happened was that uh, probably i did a few questions wrong in the exam and when i came back and i was checking my answer papers so i realized that uh, my csat marks uh, with some institutes i wasn't getting very good marks uh, thankfully i've been uh, lucky that uh, i got uh, through i i have a score of barely 70 this time so uh, yes. i was very no, attempt you were talking about right yes sir this attempt yes. so i was very uh, worried that probably i'll not be able to clear csat so i wasted a lot of time almost 20 days again here a message for all the aspirants that uh, please be very very sure about your csat paper as well because a lot of time goes wasted because of not being able to clear the csat paper yes. and it really feels worse than not being able to clear your gs yes. because uh, it's supposed to be only qualifying with 66 marks so uh, that uh, comes as a very big shock so i wasted 20 that was, days there, that was uh, tricky but, uh, right the paper itself was tricky and uh, like uh, yes sir uh, the paper was a, a little challenging but then uh, the amount of effort that i had put in i did not expect that uh, i will land up in such a situation because uh, i had planned that if i am able to attempt like 55 questions so probably i'll get a score of 100 or something that was what was happening actually in my mock papers yes. so but uh, i don't know somehow what happened maybe the exam pressure but uh, i got a few questions wrong so uh, this is uh, so after 20 days and the result was out that is when i started uh, wholeheartedly preparing for the mains exam yes. i could uh, uh, remember that you were messaging me sir i don't have enough time please make it fast you were just you were just running yes. I, i could see yes, that yes so because uh, it was only yes. because i had only 60 days at hand uh, sir so as i said that uh, for my mains paper uh, because uh, i was focusing largely on prelims so i did not do enough answer writing before the prelims exam uh this is also a very personal choice because i realized that uh, probably if i have a good content i will be able to write the answers so one should uh, again not blindly follow that what i am saying but they should assess themselves if they think that this is uh, they are also uh, similar to uh, the kind of person that i am so they can follow this strategy uh, what i did was uh, after since i had already uh, had the material for everything so i started with the test uh, probably somewhere around uh, 9th of november uh that is when i started uh, writing test so for gs1 if i were to say specifically i wrote one sectional test uh, so as to cover the society and all these uh, portions uh, for gs1 i could not write a full length test because uh, there was hardly any time between so i, I thought that i'll be able to manage it with that much of information uh, for gs paper 2 i wrote two test one was a sectional test and the other test was a full length test so uh, here gs paper 2 we have polity governance and social justice so for the static portion i refer to the similar sources that uh, i used for prelims uh, that was for polity i refer to lakshmikant and uh, for uh, governance i uh, did not do much uh, in the static portion i mostly refer to the current affairs and uh, for social justice and the society part so i had refer to uh, smriti shah ma'am's uh, notes from vision is so that is what i was using uh, for the current affairs portion here uh, for current affairs everywhere actually i have only referred to uh, vision is material Uh, the main 365 material that they mm -hmm. have and uh, for polity uh, some portions uh, the current related issues uh, with regard to international relations there is when uh, i used uh, dipin sir's uh, current affairs class material so uh, he usually gives those one pager notes so for some topics uh, those uh, current affair notes were also helpful this is what i did for paper 2 uh then i was doing uh my answer writing for paper 2 so again the same thing that i would go and write a test at uh, vision 
and uh, then as i said i was discussing the papers with sir so i would quickly come back even before i would submit the paper at vision i would come back to sir and he would actually sit with me and read all my answers or uh, to tell me how i can improve on them for example if uh, at some place if i can add a particular data point or statistics or if at some place my presentation could be improved as in i can make a flow chart or a diagram there uh, so as to uh, give a better outlook to it so these were the areas mostly where uh, we were focusing or uh, maybe to improve my conclusion because in the beginning uh, my introduction and conclusion was almost similar but uh, in the course uh, of this uh, correction mode i realized that uh, the conclusion has to be more optimistic and future looking so it has to be a way forward uh, wherein i could cite a committee report or something so these were the few changes that i made in gs paper 2 for gs paper 3 uh, for the portions that i referred to um, for economy and agriculture i refer to anupam sir's uh, class notes for the static portion for uh, current affairs uh, i refer to vision is main 365 material uh again with regard to uh, environment and science and tech uh, i completely relied on the current affairs uh, that was again main 365 of uh, vision is so here uh, again i wrote two test one was the sectional test and the other was the full length paper before the actual exam uh, this again was uh, the same procedure was followed that i would write a test come back and uh, see where we can improve our answers uh, for paper 2 specifically i have a very uh, uh, story i actually have a story to tell story, yes. so i as i said that in the beginning i had arranged for the notes so the notes that, that i referred for paper 2 were atul garg sir's uh, class notes for ethics but uh, here in ethics what i would say is that uh, since a lot of students will follow uh, class notes and ethics is one area where you can actually uh, present to the examiner your uh, expressions or your opinion because yes. it allows for a lot of creativity so uh, i would suggest that if you can add uh, some personal examples uh, those examples could be from your experience especially for doctors from what you see in the hospital or if something that you have read in the newspaper if in case you haven't even read the newspaper you can quickly google search by typing the keywords or uh, even for ethics paper what i did was uh, the previous toppers who had a uh, good marks in ethics for uh, example uh, vishakha yadav ma'am uh, she had a good score in ethics so i refer to her uh, uh, previous year copies so uh, something like that you can refer to the previous toppers and uh, see what kind of examples are they writing so you can incorporate some of that in your answers uh, what happened with me in ethics was uh, i think probably 15th of uh, november was when i wrote my first test uh, of ethics and uh, i was uh, really bad at it because uh, i could not understand how to interpret those questions uh, because uh, my mind was working so much objectively uh, for prelims and then for mains also whatever test i had written was uh, gs paper 2 so uh, i did not know that how to use that creativity and expression in that paper and uh, i almost was into tears while i was writing the paper that you know uh, this paper contains 250 marks and probably now i don't even have enough time and i'll flunk uh, the exam itself uh that is when again i sought help of sir and uh, he sat with me and he was like uh, you just need one month and uh, we will uh, do it with your answer writing you just revise your notes so i revised those notes three to four times and then again wrote another test so uh, he actually sat with me and told me how should i approach and start writing those answers yes. so that was really helpful when i wrote the uh, next test at uh, vision so the one issue that i faced was of time management but at least i was able to write the answers uh in the next test i worked on the time management part and then uh, after that i was good to go with ethics yes uh one more important thing uh, for gs papers is the sa paper uh however my score is less than what i expected it to be but uh, if i can briefly tell about my strategy so uh, for sa uh, what we can do is uh, anudeep duri shetty sir uh, he has uploaded a pdf uh, in his oh. blog where he has mentioned the important topics for ethics uh, sorry the sa paper so what aspirants can do is go through those topics and uh, they can prepare their own quotations or anecdotes or at least one pager uh, notes on those topics you don't have to read anything new whatever you have read in society polity uh, your economy portions the similar information has to be used but it would be advisable that uh, you compile it at one place so that uh, uh, just before the day of your essay paper you can quickly revise that thing so that it is fresh in your mind and uh, you can use it and also uh, i think it is important to practice a few philosophical essays because uh, this year what we saw was almost all the eight topics were on philosophical lines so uh, practicing a few essays uh, before going into the actual exam uh, will be a helpful uh, strategy for essay paper yes 
so uh, so uh, my interview was actually scheduled on the later half of the interview schedule it was uh, on the 17th so uh, towards the end and i had enough time to prepare so uh, what i did for interview uh, was that uh, i was reading two newspapers uh, the hindu and the indian express and every day whatever newspaper i was reading or uh, 3 to 4 or 4 to 5 whatever important news comes on that day's newspaper so i would actually i had a separate diary i had made for it and uh, i used to note down the important news and uh, try and form an opinion about it uh, you can form that opinion by reading the newspaper if there is something that you do not understand or find it difficult you can also google search and read a few more things also because i had the guidance of sir so i could also discuss it with him and ask him if uh, the answers that i'm framing are right or not so this is for the current affairs portion and most of the interview is actually based on the current affairs part uh, so one thing has to be the current affairs uh the other thing that i would advise is also to quickly revise some portion of your static syllabus because uh, they might not ask you a question on static uh, topic but it gives you a sense of confidence that uh, when you are going that you have actually done your part and just in case a question comes up so you are able to answer uh the other thing uh, is with regard to the detailed application form that we fill so uh for majority of candidates at least uh, the questions will be uh, centered around whatever information you have provided in your daf uh, be it your home state uh, your address your name so right from the first thing that is given in your daf uh, start from there and uh, prepare the entire daf each and every keyword know in and out about uh, whatever is given there uh, especially your hobbies uh, your interest if you have uh, won any prizes medals scholarships uh, if you have participated in any sports activity so all that information is to be known and also uh, i would advise that uh, whenever you are filling your daf uh, please do not bluff because uh, the examiner or the person they who are uh, sitting there and taking your interview they are very experienced people so uh, within a span of one to two questions they will be able to judge that uh, you have not actually done that activity so um, for example with me uh, i have not actually done any sports uh, as such so i left that column blank and uh, there were no questions also that were asked from that section so if you haven't done anything uh, in general you can leave that section blank uh, there is no compulsion to fill everything in your daf uh, second thing one important because now there is a trend that uh, people attend mock interviews so uh, for interview whenever you are going for a mock interview there are two things uh, firstly do not take every suggestion that you are getting there very seriously uh mock interviews are meant to for two things one is to understand what kind of questions can come from your daf and a uh, second thing with regard to a certain amount of mannerism or maintaining that calmness because for most of us we are facing such a senior board for the first time in our life so uh this these are the two things that you have to learn from your mock interviews and secondly when you are coming back from that interview and the video that is provided to you please sit back with that video and try and analyze uh, you know what sort of mistakes have you done uh, are you just bluffing around some answer are you exactly addressing the demand of the question sometimes it happens that uh, if a question is asked you know the students we are since in a mains mode we uh, try to give a introduction to that thing and then come later uh, to the actual body or the whatever has been asked so that thing is not required for your interview in interview you have to be very specific whatever is asked you just have to answer that so this is what uh, was with the interview uh, if uh, i were to ask uh, tell about my personal experience in the interview so um, my interview it was on the 17th and uh, that day i think uh, the first question uh, it came up very candidly that the door actually did not shut mm -hmm. so uh, for some reason when i entered and the door was still open so the first question that sir asked was uh, are you a slow person or a fast person because uh, mm -hmm. the door wasn't shutting so uh, that question came up from there yes. and uh, it further uh, followed with uh, something like uh, uh, then there were questions uh, with regard to my hobbies so one of my hobbies was letter writing so uh, he asked me about when did i last visit the post office uh, there were few questions with regard to the postal system and what reforms can we do uh, so this was one area where the questions were asked uh, second uh, there were questions with related to uh, medical science for example what uh, why did i try to choose civil services over choosing post graduate entrance or uh, if i were given a chance what post graduate uh, subject would i want to do my post graduation in so uh, and few questions with regard to maternal and child health care so these were a few questions that were asked uh, there was one panel member who i'm not aware if he was a doctor or not but he did ask me questions uh, specifically from medicine for example the function of pancreas 
or about BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes, uh, joint replacement uh, therapy. So uh, about forensic medicine and its applications. So uh, this one panel member specifically asked me questions only related to medicine. And uh, there was one panel member who asked me questions with regard to my state. Uh, if I were to make uh, a chief secretary of my state, so what research changes would I want to bring and what priority areas would I want to work on? So uh, this was uh, majorly what uh, the questions that were asked in my interview. Yes, sir. Uh, so I have no idea of if they were satisfied or not. But since I have got a decent enough score, yes. uh, I would assume that uh, they were satisfied. Because uh, in the actual interview, what most of us has experienced is that the board does not drill you over a particular question. So when they asked me this question, uh, they did not actually follow up a lot on it. Whatever I said, uh, they just uh, accepted it. So I'm not very sure of uh, what they actually thought about it. And since everybody was with the mask on, so I could not even gauge their expressions about it. Uh, but uh, my reason for choosing it was uh, over uh, the uh, conventional uh, medicine path was that uh, my main motivation came during my internship uh, when I realized that uh, there are certain challenges with regard to the delivery of healthcare. So uh, that is when I thought that uh, as a doctor, I'll be probably able to contribute at an individual level. But uh, if I am in the administration and I'm able to better implement the policies and bring about certain changes uh, with regard to how health services are delivered, so uh, my reach would uh, increase and uh, that would be more effective. So uh, this is how I framed my answers. Yes. Uh, so these are the medical science. Uh, were you doing any specific preparation for medical science related? So we want uh, wedding doctors to like how to shape their interview preparation because uh, you're all uh, these days there's so many core medical questions and also being a doctor, uh, your answers should be tweaked in more in the preventive and health related stuff, right? They were expecting yes, that. That's what I felt yes, after sir. interacting with so many doctors who attended interview this time. Yes, sir. So what is your suggestion on this? Yes, sir. So, so there are, uh, in my opinion, two kind of questions that are asked from medicos. Uh, at least that happened with me. As I mentioned, that one panel member asked me questions which were very specific. For example, he said that uh, the function of pancreas except for uh, the glucose metabolism. So he said that do not mention about insulin and then tell me other things. So mm -hmm. uh, that was very specific. That is the question where you have to be very precise with the answer. Yes. Uh, again, the question was about uh, BRCA1 or BRCA2 genes. So those are the questions where you cannot bluff. Either you know it or you do not know it. So for those questions, I think there is not enough time that you can actually revise everything. Yes. And uh, in this question, uh, for medicos, at least what I would advise is be a little calm and confident because for most of us, we have studied for five years. Yes. What we need is just to stay calm and to recollect the facts that uh, we have studied in the past five years. And uh, I'm sure that most of us will be able to come up with a decent enough answer or at least close to the actual answer. So uh, for these core questions, this is what I would advise. Uh, then the second set of questions, uh, what you also mentioned, that uh, they have a social angle. For example, what would you do for maternal and child health care or uh, malnutrition related issues? So here, uh, my advice would be uh, do not just focus on, uh, for example, if a question is on malnutrition, as uh, medicos, we generally study about F75, F100 diet or uh, something uh, that we have those 10 points with regard to hypoglycemia and all of that. So you do not have to actually get into those details. Uh, what you have to talk about is something that uh, probably uh, malnutrition is both under and over nutrition. And uh, you can give some statistics about what is the percentage of uh, stunting and all of that in the country, how the schemes are running. Uh, talk about uh, how, uh, for example, the portion of yarn that is going on, how we, we can use that. Or, uh, uh, for example, the prevalence of anemia in the country, something like that, which is... Uh, which can be used in policy making. Uh, so you do not have to actually talk like a doctor, but uh, talk like an administrator in, in such kind of questions. So uh, those will be the two kind of uh, questions. And I think this is how you should approach it. Yes. Them. So that's what happened. I, I I did collect a lot of questions this time because last time we were doing interview guidance program also for a month, only in the medical science lines. So I thought that uh, let's not delay it and do that mistake again. At least the future wedding doctors are ready for this kind of interviews. So what I found was questions are pretty basic and the board who are sitting there are mostly doctors, they're not doctors. So you need not worry that. And, yes, and all the questions are within the purview of the syllabus. Like whatever is mentioned in the medical science option, yes, they're not on the syllabus part. They're only asking that. Yes, and as Dr. Diksha very rightly said, your answer should 
uh, when you're uh, as if uh, you're speaking to a non-medical person, you should make them understand uh, the basics of the medicine in a normal language, not medical language. I think that will work. And you have to link your answers yes. with uh, the national health program. Yes. Uh, so, so I think uh, for all the upcoming aspirants, uh, there are a few things that I would want to say. One is that uh, limit your resources and uh, revise those resources multiple times. Do not run after uh, a lot of material or become a material collector in the process that we see. Second is uh, have a very uh, dedicated or a focused approach towards the exam. It shouldn't be the case that you are studying for one day and then taking a break for two days. So every day if you're putting in those uh, five to six hours, seven to eight hours of dedicated study uh, for one year, uh, it will be very, very helpful. Uh, third thing what I want to say is again uh, that uh, you do not have to only work hard, but you have to work smart. Uh, for example, analyzing your papers, choosing the right resources or the right kind of guidance. So be very mindful of uh, those things as well. And uh, the last thing uh, that I would say, and I've said it at a lot of places, uh, that uh, delay does not mean denial. And if uh, probably that you have failed in one of your attempts and you are not able to succeed uh, despite your efforts, please have that uh, confidence, that belief in yourself. Uh, even if there is nobody who is guiding you, uh, believe in that force uh, that is with you because you have worked hard and uh, that probably one day you will be able to achieve your target. So if with that persistence you are able to uh, work hard, uh, I'm sure that whatever goal uh, you have set for yourself, you will be able to achieve that. Oh, how is your family? Yeah. They're enjoying your success. Like... Yes, sir, definitely they're happy because uh, probably this was just not my uh, thing, but they had also, you know, the last three years have been emotionally toiling for them also. Yes. So that I think they are extremely happy. They're... So what are your future plans now? Uh, so right now, uh, just excited. I think I've become a little more busier than I was earlier. Yes. And yes. every day I've been getting calls for interviews. So this is what I'm managing right now. Uh, next probably would be that uh, I'll be going to Delhi because uh, I have a few commitments there. Yes, yes. And uh, then uh, again to the academy. So I'm really excited for that now. <laughs> now you are in Dehradun, right? Dehradun. Uh, sir, I'm in Pathoragad right now. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes. So, uh, Libasana and your place has similar weather temperature. And yes, 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 yes. So it's not a big deal for you to adjust. Uh, from people yes, from yes, South, so if they come there, I think they I, to Yes, yes, because I, when I was in Delhi, I met a few people from South and they used to, yes. at least in winter, they had a lot of problems. So all the best for your future, go and serve the nation. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Yes.